Depending on your beliefs and upbringing, you may not be familiar with the idea of a great apostasy. If you were or are a Jehovah's Witness, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the claim that the early church fell completely away. The truth was lost for nearly two millennia, but finally restored by earnest Bible students in the late 1800s. Is that biblical or even historical? This belief is not just held by Jehovah's Witnesses. Mormons share this belief, Seventh-day Adventists, World Mission Society, and many, many more. First is the why. Why do they accept this? Well, if you claim you're restoring the lost church, it has to be lost in the first place. No better place to start than the death of the apostles. After all, you're just picking up where they left off. So, did the early church move into apostasy? Was every Christian for nearly 2,000 years believing pagan lies and essentially worshiping Satan without knowing it? Or did some fall away and get drawn out by false teaching? But the message of the gospel stayed intact. So we're left with believing the whole or the sum. Approaching this strictly from the Jehovah's Witness side, let's see what scripture says. First, Acts 20:29. 20, I know that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you, not sparing the flock. And from among your own selves, men will arise, speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after them. Let's pull this apart. Paul is using the same phrase Jesus did in Matthew 7.15. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. Jesus isn't saying, when I leave and when my apostles die, then wolves will come in and eat all the sheep. No, it's a warning. Be careful. There are false teachers and false prophets, so be careful. Trust my words over anyone else's. Equally as important, Paul isn't talking to the entire church in the first century. He's addressing one group of believers in Miletus. This chapter in Acts explains how he shows up and how he departs, reminding them this trip is a one-time thing. I'm not coming back, so don't screw this up. Paul knows they won't let him down, since he says, I now entrust you with the gospel. See, this isn't talking about the church as a whole. Even if he said, hey, you'll all fall away, which he didn't, this wouldn't be talking about several thousands of other believers throughout the ancient world. This is just addressing one small group of Christians. So nothing here about a great apostasy. This would be speaking of some. Another verse they use is 2 Peter 2. However, this verse doesn't say all either, just many. It's convenient that the Watchtower skipped over a verse here, the one that says many. Anyway, probably the most popular verse is 2 Thessalonians 2.3. As it's assumed, this prophesizes a great apostasy, a massive falling away. Now, I'm not talking about eschatology, but I'll still say why this isn't a full-on apostasy. What is the context? People are saying Christ has already come. Paul argues, no, he hasn't. First, you'll see a falling away, and then the man of lawlessness, real or metaphorical, will appear, someone worse than what we've seen so far. Then, when Christ returns, he will destroy this lawlessness and all those who followed him. Note that this apostasy is already at work. We know others are currently falling away. We see this all over the place in nearly every letter in the New Testament. But does this prophecy say all? No. Does it say that the truth will leave? No. Does it say it will be restored later on? No. What's the focus? The man of lawlessness. This is talking about a singular event and what to watch for, not about an entire church falling away. The last one used is the wheat and the weeds from Matthew 13, 24 through 30. They even have a graph. However, this one actually disproves the entire idea if you just read it. The context is so straightforward. The wheat are the believers and the weeds are the non-believers. Workers seed the field. The devil sneaks in and plants weeds among the seeds. Then the grain sprouts, the weeds are noticed, and instead of plucking both, the farmer says, don't do that, you'll hurt the grain. Wait until harvest time. They'll both grow together. Then when harvest comes, we'll separate the wheat from the weeds. Is all the wheat snuffed out? No. In fact, when the weeds are noticed, the wheat has already grown considerably. From a JW perspective, the field is 99.99999% weeds. All the wheat's destroyed. It's nothing but compost. That's not what this parable teaches. Both grow together. Not the weeds snuffed out all the good seed or the weeds overtook the field. I'm no farmer, except in Stardew Valley, but if my crop was 99.99999% weeds, I just burned down the whole field. A witness might latch on to the, while they were sleeping. Yeah, the workers woke up. They worked the next day. It's not saying the workers died. Their work encompasses the entire harvest, beginning to end. They are involved from start to finish. This parable illustrates the devil implanting lies while God is at work, growing his good seed. 
There isn't any verse that definitely speaks of a whole falling away and rather supports the many. Just look at 2 Timothy 2.16-18 or 1 Timothy 4.1, how some will depart the faith, not all. I know what you might be thinking. DH, you're the next Picasso, but there's nothing concrete. I need to know it didn't fall away. You mean, are there verses that say the church won't fall away, but will remain and continue to grow? Why, yes. The greatest example is Christ's own words. On this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. A.K.A. Satan won't win. According to great apostasy believers, Jesus was wrong. Satan did win. If you conquer 99.99999% of your enemy, you win. For JW history, Satan wins. The church goes pagan. Bible becomes corrupted. The good news message prophesied for hundreds of years is lost. But thanks be to Pastor Russell for being such a good Bible student, restoring the church that was lost. Any more? Of course. 1 John 2.8 on the other hand, I am writing a new commandment to you, which is true in him and in you, because the darkness is passing away and the true light is already shining. The darkness is passing, not the light is passing. Let's quickly address that the church is the bride of Christ. If there was a great apostasy, Christ just let his bride die? Christ died for his bride, not the other way around. Matthew 28, 19-20 And behold, I am with you always, to the end of the age. Combine that with, I will never leave you nor forsake you. I trust Jesus never left us. Let's not forget the Helper, the Holy Spirit, leading all into truth. If there was a whole falling away, I guess the Spirit just decided, well, Satan is just too strong. Oh, shucks. If only God was stronger. Last one. Remember Matthew 13? If you keep reading, Jesus gives another parable, how his church starts small, smaller than all the others, but grows so big it's taller than any other plant in the field. I mean, Christianity did start with 120 people and is now 2.3 billion, the largest in the world. The Bible is very clear. Some will fall away and believe false teachers and false doctrines. Historically, we see this, and even the Bible addresses it. We have these two verses in saying that if anyone comes with a teaching that Jesus didn't come in the flesh, they aren't from God, a.k.a. false teachers. This refers to the Gnostics, the core belief that the spirit was good and the flesh was bad. The divine word couldn't become flesh because reasons. Paul calls them out directly in 1 Timothy 6.20. He says here not to believe in the so-called knowledge. In the Greek, knowledge is gnosis, which is where we get Gnosticism from. So there we have it. No biblical support for a great apostasy. The same gospel message has been preached consistently for 2,000 years. That God became a man in the person of Christ lived a perfect life, died for the sins of the world, and came back to life, proving he could be trusted, and now reconciliation with God is possible when we put faith in the person and work of Christ. A JW might say, no, the church definitely fell into apostasy because the church teaches the Trinity, hellfire, and the immortal soul. Okay, I will address each one of those, but let's not forget, Christians have always debated over hell and exactly what happens at death. However, Christ's deity has been consistently taught, even among the earliest church fathers. My witness friend, did you ever consider these doctrines are biblical and you're the one who fell away following false teachers? Again, to claim the church died, you ultimately have to ignore scripture and claim Jesus was wrong. Those who preach the great apostasy demote Christ to promote themselves and ultimately teach God failed, Jesus failed, the apostles failed, but we, your leaders, we have the real truth. We won't fail you. Everything we say is true, unlike those Christians. Trust us. After all, God trusts us. Since Jehovah God and Jesus Christ completely trust the faithful and discreet slave, should we not do the same? No, we shouldn't.